Steve Galster is the director of Freeland, a counter trafficking group. He joins us now live from Bangkok. Thanks for joining us on the program. So this is the first year that drafts are being considered. Why is that? Well, a lot of drafts have been killed uh, for trophy hunting. Also, there's a lot of local hunters that are killing them for meat. Uh, so, you know, anytime a, a species is listed on CITES, while we may hear it's a victory to protect them, it's also an indicator that there's been a failure by the protection system for wildlife. So. Uh, just like many other species, wildlife traders move from one species to the other, and giraffes have been the latest victim. Mm -hmm. So giraffes will yes. now be protected. Uh, what is it? What exactly does that mean? Well, it means uh, you know there's going to be there's actually still going to be some uh, allowance of some sport hunting of giraffes in some countries for a little while longer, and those countries need to decide you know are they going to close that down entirely or not. Most countries that have giraffes, though, seem to have gotten together on this one and agreed that they need to uh, halt the killing. So this means, you know, you would not be able to necessarily go to Africa now and spend twenty to thirty thousand dollars and go kill a giraffe, have your picture taken with it, take the skin or the head home. Mm. So that's that's one of the impacts. Also, there'll be stepped up anti-poaching protection to make sure that giraffes are are not hunted by uh, local people as well. Mm -hmm. So how are giraffes used in international trade, aside from trophy hunting? What's the biggest threat to these animals? No, I mean, uh, there's also the other threat, which is habitat loss. I mean, some giraffe families and um, groups have uh, dwindled in numbers because their, their habitat is decreasing. They feed on acacia trees, but they also need large tracts of land to move around and mate. So, you know, the, the future of giraffes is really, uh, it's partly about stopping the hunting of it, but it's also about creating good perimeter defenses and making sure that these large tracts of wild habitat are, are preserved. Mm -hmm. So it's not just giraffes, though, that uh, they've been talking about at this conference. What are some of the actions or other solutions that the conference looked at to manage wildlife trade so that it doesn't drive species to extinction? Oh, lots and lots. I mean, the CITES meeting is one of the longest ones uh, under the UN convention. It goes on for at least two weeks, and every day they discuss one species after another. Sharks, elephants, rhinos, uh, you name it. Also, plants. I mean, this is also about wild plants. Thousands of species are actually um, monitored and discussed. So there was an attempt, again, uh, to downlist elephants so that uh, certain countries could trade in their tusks. Uh, but a, a good positive thing that we saw happen after China just a couple of years ago banned the domestic trade in ivory, which is where a lot of the ivory was going to, uh, Japan has announced that they, they too are going to have a domestic ban on ivory because they've been uh, fingered for allowing some leakage of ivory from Japan over to the mainland of China. Mm -hmm. All right, Steve Golster, thank All you right. for joining us today.